Welcome to example number two, the conduction in two bars held in series with one another. So we have a sketch of our problem. You notice that we've used different subscripts. Uh, this is the hot temperature, this is the cold temperature, and we'll use similar subscripts for our different values that we have. We're told that this bar is a rectangular, uh, or actually a square cross section to it, with two centimeters on each side. So the area, which is not listed here, is two centimeters by two centimeters. Okay, now what's the key idea in solving this problem? Now you have heat flowing through steel and copper, two different materials that are in succession with one another. There is an interface right here between the steel and the copper and it's not going to be 50 Celsius because steel and copper have different thermal conductivities and plus the lengths are different. So you can't just say, oh, it's 50. That's what we're trying to find is what is that temperature right here. Okay, the key principle in this is that the uh, in steady state heat flow, we can assume that the heat has to pass through both materials in succession and so the heat must be the same in both materials. So that means that the heat currents or the rate of heat flow in the two bars must be equal. Otherwise some sections would have more heat flowing in than out or the reverse and the steady con state conditions would not exist. Okay, so your key principle here is the heat rate of heat flow of the steel is exactly the same as the rate of heat flow for the copper. Now the formula that we use for the rate of heat flow is the thermal conductivity, so we have steel times the cross-sectional area A, which is the same for both of them, times the change in temperature for the steel divided by the length of the steel bar and the same equation over here but for copper. Now we do have to look up some information. We need to find the conductivity of steel and the conductivity of copper. So you can go to uh, earlier in notes and find that. Um, I believe that my thermal conductivities that are listed in the notes are slightly different from the ones I originally solved for this example and hence we're probably going to get a different answer than listed down below. But if you look at the previous page you'll see there's a table of conductivities. Uh, we have steel and copper at 390 and 14. So let's write them into our given down here. And you can see that copper has quite a high thermal, thermal conductivity which means that it's a, a relatively good conductor compared to steel. Steel is not such a good conductor. It's not an insulator but it's a poor conductor. Okay, let's start substituting into here. Now you can see that the area on both sides is, is the same so we can cancel out the area here when we solve uh, for the temperature. Okay, so we have the uh, conductivity for steel is 14. Uh, the temperature difference between this side and this side of the copper. Now you have to be careful when you do the temperature difference. It's really from the hot minus the cold. So that would be 100 minus T. And over here, well let's put it on the divide by the length which is 0.1. That's uh, 10 centimeters divided by uh, 100 to get 0.1 meters. And then we have the thermal conductivity for copper, which is 390. And then the change in temperature is hot temperature is T in this case. And then the cold temperature is zero. So T minus zero divided by the length of the bar, which is 0.2 meters. You can see that 0.1 will go into 0.2 two times. And simplifying, we have 2 times 14 times 100 minus T. And on the right side, we have 390 minus, times T. And then 2800 minus 28T equals 390T. And we get T equals uh, 6.7 degrees Celsius. You can see I don't have the right answer here listed. Uh, that's because it was using a different thermal conductivity when the problem was shown first. OK, so that's part A. Part B is asking for the total heat flow.
to find the total heat flow or rate of heat flow or heat current we basically take that temperature that we just found and we substitute back into either of the previous equations for steel or for copper so I'll just do it for steel so that would be conductivity for steer, steel times the area times the change in temperature for steel divided by the length of the steel so that would be for steel it's 14 joules per second times meter times degrees Celsius you'll notice I'm putting units I should have done it over here uh, but I'm purposely doing units because I want to make sure that I have the right units for my energy flow uh, area is point uh, well it's two centimeters times two centimeters which I really should be putting it as meter so it's point two meters squared which is really uh, point zero 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 four meters squared so let's put that in here then the change in temperature will be 100 degrees Celsius minus our temperature of 6.7 degrees Celsius and then all of that divided by the length of the bar which is 0.1 meters and hopefully you'll see some units cancel out here the meters here and the meters here cancel out with meters squared there and then the degrees Celsius here cancel out with the degrees Celsius here and here and then we should get an answer that's in joules per second which comes out to an answer of 5.22 joules per second for this or you could say 5.22 watts so again once my answer down here is incorrect because it was using a different thermal conductivity just quickly reflecting upon this problem um, hopefully you look at this and see whoa that temperature is 6.7 degrees so in the copper bar it drops just 6.7 whereas the steel bar dropped from 100 all the way to 6.7 that's quite a big drop on the steel bar and you might be wondering why well it has really to deal with the steel bars thermal conductivity it's really a poor conductor so most of that uh, heat uh, or the temperature drop is within the steel even though it's actually shorter okay that's it for this example and now you're ready to try an example with conduction of two bars in parallel the next example and the last one in this packet.